Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next threat level if you want, considering NIJ uh, standards, we were uh, able to stop what's considered a uh, level three, possibly three plus with the 308 on the last video. So this one, we're going to go ahead and, and go ahead and try to stop this guy right here. Uh, I don't have one with me, but I'll insert a picture. We're going to try to stop the M2AP, which is a 30 out six. And since this is a much higher level threat, potentially something most people won't see, I didn't do full uh, sapphic plates, 10 by 12. We went ahead and just did um, eight by eight uh, samples. So we went ahead and used the strike face that worked best on the level three plates was a porcelain tile. It's about five, eight, five eighths inches thick. And then I did three different types of backers. Let me go ahead and show you what they are. So we went ahead with the tried and true. This one right here, we have the porcelain tile as our strike face. And we went ahead and did the woven roven as a backer. We have 30 layers of woven roven on this one and the porcelain tile is a strike face. So this is by far the heaviest plate. This one would come in right around nine pounds if it was a full uh, 10 by 12 plate. It would also be about an inch and three eighths, almost an inch and a half. Our next one, porcelain tile once again up front, but in the back, I went ahead and purchased two level 3a kevlar uh 8x8 rectangles so we'll see if two level 3a and a 5 8 inch porcelain tile can stop a level four threat next this is what i feel has the best oh and let me so this with the kevlar would come in at eight and a half pounds if it were a full 10 by 12 plate uh, and it's a little bit thinner possibly the second thinnest this one was an inch and a quarter this one i think has the best chance at stopping it we went ahead and did it again porcelain tile up front but the back the back is a surplus level three polyethylene pressed um, I believe it was just a rectangular plate, an Italian surplus plate. Uh, we went ahead and cut it so that it would fit the eight by eight shape. This one would come in at eight pounds, six ounces. So a little less than eight and a half pounds if it were a 10 by 12 uh, plate. This one is very thick though. This, this one is actually about an inch and a half thick. Now the last one is probably the most homemade plate, except for the strike face. We went away from the porcelain tile and actually are using a aluminum ceramic actual strike face. This only comes in at 0.4 inches thick. And I went ahead and just folded 88 layers of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So this has the ceramic strike face and 88 layers of polyethylene. This one is the closest thing I feel to conventional body armor. This has probably the lightest weight. This would come in right over seven pounds, seven pounds, two ounces. This is just under one inch. So this is 0.9 inches thick. So let's go take these out to the range. Let's see what uh, they do. And uh, for those that you, for those of you that have been asking, I do have the bulletproof glass all done up. These things are clear, super clear. They are two and a half inches thick and I have multiple um, samples, m some with more, more glass, some that are all plastic, some that are a combination of both. That will be in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But let's go ahead and take these out to the range, see what we can stop. Hopefully we can stop the 30 at six AP round. Let's, uh, let's go out to the range, see what we get. 
Okay, out at the range with our level four uh, plates that we're gonna go ahead and try. We go ahead, we have our 30 out six. We have a Remington 700 and we got our World War II M2 APs. So what these are, these black tips, they have a steel core inside of them. Steel core inside of them. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, see if any of our plates, we have two right here, we have four plates that we're gonna try out. This is our thinnest and thickest. Okay, so we're gonna start out with what I think is the most least likely to survive. All right, so here we go. We got our first M2AP against our first plate up there. We got porcelain tile and woven roving. Okay. So let's see how we did. We hit right there, awfully crunchy. We got a little hole there. And another little hole. <laughs> and you're not gonna believe what I just found. We found. <laughs> We found that round. <laughs> okay, so that one went through. On to the next plate, the one 3A Kevlar. Okay, so we're actually going to give this plate one more try. We're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna try some 556. We have M855A1. It's got the hardened tip right here. It's a specialty round again. We're gonna say it's above uh, three plus. So let's give it a try and see what we can get. So here is the A1. It is less than an inch away, so it's not a fair hit, but let's Let's go ahead and see what it did. It did not, it did not go through. I can check the back, but very little deformation. So I guess we could say this is a three plus plate, but definitely not a level four. So onto the Kevlar. Okay, so now we have the porcelain tile and Kevlar set up. And in case you forgot, that's the porcelain tile, and it has two level 3A Kevlar pieces behind it. So let's see if we can stop that. Let's see if that stops M2AP. Okay, here we go. So once again, hit pretty square. And looks like we have another pass through. Let's move this just to confirm. We did. And unfortunately this time, I don't see the core. We'll look for it and see if we can find it later but that is another pass through. On to the polyethylene. We have the Kevlar plate set up still. We're gonna go ahead and backtrack a little bit and go ahead, put a 855A1 in there, a 556, and see if we can't stop it with that. So here we go. Okay, so here's where we hit with the A1556. And uh oh, something's telling me Kevlar wasn't able to stop it. Look at that. 
So in this situation, 3A, 2 3A Kevlar pieces and tile are not able to stop the A1. Interesting. Okay, on to the big boy. Okay, so now we got the thickest one up there. We got the porcelain tile with the level three surplus Italian polyethylene, which also measures about a half inch. So let's see if this can stop M2AP. Okay, so obviously this is where we hit. We seem to have had a little bit more come out in the front. But there it is, straight through it again. Uh, so let's try the M855A1, see if that'll stop it. Okay, so we're gonna try to hit it in the upper right portion of the plate. All right, 556A1, here we go. Okay, so here is where the 556A1 hit, and we were able to stop that. Okay. So while this is one of the thickest, or is the thickest plate that I have out here, it is also one of the lightest, but either way, that's uh, just about three plus. All right, let's try our homemade. All right, so we're down to our last plate here. This is really gonna show us if the strike face has a lot more to do with the level four body armor. We have an aluminum, I believe it's aluminum oxide ceramic and I just folded 88 layers of polyethylene. So we're gonna go ahead, shoot this one and see if this can stop M2AP. Here we go. Whoa. Oh my, oh my. That did not go through. As a matter of fact, if you look at it from here, you could see the core in there. Woo -hoo. That, that says a lot. So apparently strike face has more to do than the backing with these AP rounds. That is a little bit of a indention there, but I wouldn't say that's more than 20 millimeters into there. Wow. Very impressive. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and de deconstruct this one right here and see, we just have some tape on the outside and really get into the guts. So that's the ceramic, the aluminum ceramic right there. Here's the 88 layers of polyethylene. And let me dump that out. As you can see, it broke up the core. I'm not sure I'll be able to get that out. Ah, there's the jacket and there's the core. It is completely mangled. More of the jacket. This, this is the core that we found from the, the porcelain with polyethylene. So you can see the difference that you have right there.
Okay, so after that last one, I started thinking maybe that surplus, you know, because it's surplus, it's old used. I have one of the remnants from the piece I cut up there. And I thought, I know level three is only rated to 762 by 51, 308, but we're gonna shoot a 30 out six at this plate and see if a 30 out six full metal jacket, a 150 grain, and see if this can handle it. Maybe, maybe that backing had some something to do with not stopping the other thick plate. So let's give it a try. Well, I'm gonna say it's not the plate. <laughs> We went in right there and uh, did not go through. And this is a 30 out six from 15 yards away. Granted, I will say that's at least two and a half inches, two inches in. Again, this is over, over what it's uh, rated for. But once again, this just re-emphasizes the, the importance of the strike face. So in conclusion, what did we learn? Well, when testing homemade body armor trying to achieve level four performance, you'll have to stop special threat projectiles which have hardened cores. These hardened cores are substantially harder than the common lead or copper cores that make up most full metal jackets. Now knowing that we can scale the hardness needed to break the projectile down and then catch them in the backing material. And that, in short, is why the thinnest, lightest plate was able to stop the M2 AP round. It had the hardest strike face and the best composition. So moving forward, we will have the bullet resistant glass video next. For that project, we'll, we will be trying to stop the 308 and two and a half inch thick of glass material. And while this video didn't really have a build portion, the bullet resistant glass video will. So stay tuned in for that, and until then...